how do we as a whole feel about wireless charging? First of all, it's important to point out right off the bat that no, Apple did not by any means invent wireless charging. In fact, a lot of people still get upset when I call it that, but that's, come on, that's what it is. Until we have truly wireless charging, as in power can be sent across the room to a device, but even the device that sends that power might even rely on a cord. So as of now, this inductive charging, when you put your phone on a little plate that charges it, let's just refer to that as wireless charging. Yes, we know you have to plug it in, so there's still technically a cable, but even if you plug in something that beamed power across the air. The outlet is relying on wires behind the wall. So wires are involved regardless. But Samsung, I think, is kind of the big company that has revolutionized that because they've been doing it for a while. It was introduced on the Galaxy S6 and that came out many years ago and it has slowly gotten better and better over the years. Now they have fast wireless charging so that your phone can get a lot of power very quickly and it doesn't seem like a lot of the competition has really picked up on wireless charging. Samsung has kind of been the sole leader of it for a while and and now, with the introduction of the iPhone 8 and iPhone 10, it seems like they're finally actually getting to a point where Samsung will actually have a competitor that is capable of wireless charging. But very bizarrely, and I was kind of surprised by this, Apple did not introduce their own pad or wireless charger. They talked about air power, which is kind of Apple's unique approach towards wireless charging, something I think Samsung hasn't done, which is letting the same wireless charging pad charge an array of different devices between your watch and your AirPods and your phone all at the same time, which personally, I am very excited for. It's gonna cost like $150, I know, but that would be really exciting. I still have a ton of questions like, can it charge two iPhones at the same time? Could it charge three to four Apple Watches at the same time since they rely on so little power? If you and all your friends and family all had an Apple Watch and you just had one air power, could you just drop all four of them on the air power mat and it would charge all of them? I don't know, I still have a ton of questions about it. But regardless, I'm curious to see how users currently use wireless charging may go up in number as now it is available to iOS users because Apple is such a big part of the market. Samsung is too, but personally, I know a couple people with Samsung phones. Wireless charging isn't really a big deal for them, which is completely understandable because when you think about it, it doesn't really save you that much time. You see, charging your phone is something you kind of do every now and then. At the very least, you know, you're probably using it all day and then right before you go to bed, you plug it in. That's what I typically do. Occasionally, if I'm using my phone a lot, I may have to charge it in the middle of the day. But when you think about it, it's not that complicated. You grab your phone, you plug it in. What saves so much time about wireless charging? You drop your phone and then you're good. There are still some defects to wireless charging as well, such as, you know, when you're charging your phone with a cable, you can still use it, you can move it around, you can point it at things, where wireless charging is almost always dependent on gravity resting your phone against the pad. So there's already some reasons for you to not switch to wireless charging, but for that one simple occurrence when it is convenient to just drop it on a desk or drop it on your nightstand and it just starts charging, Apple and Samsung both believe it is totally worth changing changing the back of their phones to a form of glass, so that is now possible. So that's how much faith they have in it. However, I feel like the people who buy into Apple are typically a tad more loyal to that brand. And because of that loyalty, I think wireless charging might become more popular when it is introduced on the iPhones, opposed to just the Samsung phones. Because yes, while Galaxy smartphones are really good, I don't think the people who have loyalty to Samsung have the same amount of loyalty to Apple. The Apple Sheep army, as you can see behind me. You see, Apple Sheep will buy things they don't don't even think they need, but because Apple makes it, they suddenly believe it'll make their Apple ecosystem better. And I think that's going to be a big factor in the future when Apple introduces air power. And hopefully if they start bringing wireless charging onto the iPads and potentially someday even the MacBooks, I think they're just gonna start making even larger versions of air power, like an air mat, where it starts to be the size of, you know, half your desk and you can put your phone on it, your AirPods, but also you can put your iPad there. And if you have a MacBook, you can put that there. But of course that will come in time when Apple figures out how to deliver and transfer so much power inductively, you know, not through a core. And of course, it means major design refreshes on many of the devices we already have, such as the iPad. Giving that thing a glass back is gonna be quite a major refresh, probably the biggest change we've seen to the iPad in a while. And even more complicated, adding a glass back to a MacBook. That's something that's really never been done and it's not really the back, it's kind of the foot. Plus a MacBook has those little rubber feet on the bottom. However, supposedly this new wireless charging method for the iPhone 
8 and 10 works, even if you have a case. So if it works through rubber and it works through a case, I'm sure that if a MacBook has a little rubber feet underneath it, then placing it on something like a larger version of air power, I'm sure it'll probably still deliver power just as fast. But still, delivering power through USB-C and through lightning is still one of the fastest ways to charge your devices. If you didn't know, the iPhone 8 and 10 do support fast charging, they just don't ship with fast charging cables or bricks. And a lot of people were worried that the wireless charging on the iPhone 8 and 10 is going to be limited to 7.5 watts, when actually if we look into the tech specs and features of the new Belkin wireless charger that Apple is telling everyone to buy, they put it on their Apple store, they didn't make their own charging pad, but they are advertising this one quite heavily. In the description of that item, it says that fast wireless charging is going to be enabled later in the year via software update. Why didn't Apple talk about that? Because a lot of people were worried that, you know, the iPhone 8 and 10 couldn't charge fast wirelessly, but it seems like it can. They're just going to wait to install. Why do you have to wait? Why not just tell people you can charge fast on the wireless? It's, it's that easy. I don't get it when companies do that, but maybe there's some reasoning behind it. I don't know. Maybe they want to work out the kinks or something. I have a hard time understanding it, but I'm pretty sure that the 8 and 10 will still support fast wireless charging, just not at launch for some reason. So as fast wireless charging gets better and better, now that Apple's in that game, I think that the Apple Sheep Army is going to buy into it a lot more than Samsung users did. And hopefully in the future, we can see this inductive charging brought to iPads and MacBooks. Because it'd be really cool if you just had a dedicated spot on your desk where you put your MacBook there and it is always charging. You don't have to find some cable. And all you people who complain about MagSafe not being on the new MacBook Pros, now you have nothing. It's like, well, MagSafe, you could trip on it and the cable pops out easily. Now there's just no cable. How are you going to beat that? The MacBook just sits there and works and same goes for the iPad. I, of course, am very excited for all the new capabilities of wireless charging, bringing more usability to the Apple ecosystem. But I also want to know your thoughts. So let me know in the comments below. This is your Apple Sheep here, and I will see you in the next one.